Hi, Rick here from Marion for Models, DJI dealer from the UK and RC specialist for 40 years. If you have a Phantom 3 or even an Inspire at some point, either from new or not long after you've purchased your Phantom 3, you're going to get welcomed with this message, firmware available uh, required to update. Now, you can actually press on without updating, but at some point the model will actually force you. It won't allow you to fly without updating the firmware. So I'm going to show you a quick fire way of updating without the use of uh, SD card adapters. So the first thing you need to do is get your model um, powered up and then pick out your um, U uh, USB lead that comes with the Inspire. This is actually an Android style one. So the first thing you need to do is plug that into your computer and then on the side of the camera you'll see there's another USB socket and plug into there and then you'll notice the gimbal will actually go limp and it will start making this peeping noise. So on your computer itself, you'll get this dialog box popping up, which is basically, which is the Phantom appearing as a, an external drive, which you can see there. As you see, there's nothing on the actual card just now, no old firmwares, because this would be, say, for example, a new model. Now, the first thing you need to do is go to the DJI website. So go to DJI.com products Phantom 3, click on the download tab, Click on, there we go. And what we need to do is we need to download the firmware. Now this is our Phantom 3 Advanced, so we're gonna go for the advanced software. So just click on the zip and download that. We've got it down here, and it'll take a few minutes, so I'm just gonna do a clever little cut of the video. Okay, so that's the file downloaded. Now it comes down as a zip file, so we will actually need to unzip that. But when we open up the uh, file, what we will see is, you'll see there's actually a how-to guide how to do it, but also the actual uh, file itself. So what we need to do is we need to extract these files. So I'm just going to extract them straight to my download folder. Brrr, boom. And then what we need to do is we need to drag them across to the model. So if we go into uh, computer, and then we've got, that is you there, removable drive, that is the actual Phantom there. And what we need to do is we need to drag that file over to the actual root folder. So only the actual firmware, which is a bin file, do we drag across. Just let that download across. Now, if you do get any kind of update problems, failures, etc., uh, which does happen, the best thing to do is format the SD card so it's completely clean. There'll be absolutely nothing in it. So make sure you've fully formatted it and then retransfer the, uh, the firmware file back across. Okay, now that we've transferred the file, what we're going to do is we're going to repower the, um, the Phantom. But the first thing you can do is actually disconnect the USB because the file is now actually on board. So we turn that off, bump, and then back on again. You'll get the usual powering up and the gimbal calibrating itself. However, this time we're going to be listening out for beeps. That's it now starting. And what we're waiting for is uh, four beeps in a row, um, and that is the actual firmware starting to uh, update. Now, the whole process can actually take up to 20 minutes, so it's not something you can do quickly. Now, I don't know if you've noticed actually here, this is probably not the best of scenarios. I've only got two bars left on my battery. Ideally, with this, you would start with a fully charged battery or at the very least a half charged battery. But I think we'll be okay. But if you can now hear, if I put my microphone in, you, you can now hear the beeper. It's like four beeps in a row. So as that's going to take about 20 minutes, I'm just going to cut the video. Okay, finally, you will hear the notes changing to a more interrupted beep, and that now means that the uh, firmware is now updated. Now, we can check the status of that by plugging the USB socket back into the model. 
And if you go back to your computer and go back into the actual Phantom, you'll see now that there is a text file. So if you click on that text file, this is what you will get. This is what you're looking for, success. And this now means that the Phantom has updated successfully. Now we're going to move on to the controller. Now what we do is we take the USB connection out of your computer and then plug that into where normally your um, tablet plugs into. So just simply plug that into there. Okay, and then what we need to do is we need to turn the Phantom back on. Okay, and then we turn on the controller. Now the controller doesn't take as long to update, but it updates in exactly the same way. Now it can take up to 60 seconds for the controller to actually start updating. See, now the light on the front there, that has now gone to amber. That means that it's now commencing the update. Now it's actually turned to blue now, and it's now making the same four beeps in a row noise for updating. So we'll just let it now. Generally, it doesn't take as long to update. Usually, it's usually about five to 10 minutes, so not as long as the actual Phantom itself. Okay, that didn't take long at all, and when it's finished updating, you'll notice the light on the front has now turned green. Now, we'll want to check to see if that is actually updated correctly. So once again, what we'll do is we'll unplug the USB socket from the controller, and we're going to plug that back into the PC. So when you plug it back in, the Phantom back into the computer, you'll get prompted to open up the folder. So we open that up once again, and then you'll now see that there are now some more logs in here. So uh, if we click on that one, we can see here, uh, they're upgrading success. Close that one down. Another one here, success. So this is all for all the various parts, A, B, so, in fact, this is one here, this is interesting actually, because result success, however, as you'll notice here, it's also got result abort, and I think this is actually for the controller, which the controller probably didn't actually need an update. So it says, firmware on the SD card is identical or older than the current firmware of the aircraft. So you get abort, so that is okay. So either success or abort. If you get failed, you have to start again. And as I said earlier, you best to reformat the SD cards completely. Now, um, I have had people having issues with this, and I don't know why, but generally with Mac computers not formatting the cards correctly, and then when you plug it back in to do the firmware update, the problem is, is the Phantom or the controller will see um, like ghosted, ghosted files on the SD card and they don't seem to, uh, don't seem to uh, start the update, and that causes a lot of problems. We get that quite a lot, people bringing models into the shop, failed updates, They've formatted the card, but it didn't format properly. And then I take a look with my PC in administrator mode, and there are ghosted files on the SD card, which I format and update correctly. Okay, so now we've got all the firmware updated. We should be able to go straight into the app and check the status. So if we click on there, now overall status, normal latest firmware. Now it's a good idea once you've done any firmware updates, it's a good idea to calibrate the IMU. So this is the internal measurement unit inside the model. This is what tells the, uh, the flight controller what is level. So if you click on the mode, down to sensors, um, you can actually check all your various values here, but what we're going to do is, you can actually check the IMU if you want. Now it says here, see, checking it, keep it all level while Checking the IMU, checking the IMU. Now it says it's not required, but a lot of people just like to do it. As a matter of course, you just say click, click on the IMU. Remember, keep it absolutely level when you're doing this. Do not move it at all. And then you can see on the bottom there, you're just doing the wee progress there. Now we're at 100%, so the IMU is fully calibrated. But we're just going to wait for that just to finish off. Okay, and that's we're done. So we can just close that down, and you can go back in. Just recheck everything there so latest firmware uh, if you required a compass calibration then obviously it would ask you to calibrate it in there so i hope you found that video helpful and uh, i'm rick from manifold models dji dealer from the uk